uh, I, I'm, it's absolutely appalling when, when you consider that they're actually looking at the failure rates of second graders in terms of literacy and extrapolating in terms of how they're going to build the prison system down the road. That's crazy to me. So instead of actually applying resources to the literacy, which is necessary, and actually getting the scientific data or the foundation that's necessary to understand how kids learn and what's effective, which is exactly what you're doing, which is brilliant, they're actually basically just working to build a prison industrial complex. Yeah. So I've got a serious, serious problem with that, and that needs to be exposed. So tell this to the stat so for our, our documentary here. Um, Do I actually don't know the stat. I, I, I what, heard it was, about the, it, but what it was is that they're building prisons now based on the illiteracy um, rate of second graders. So if you have, in the States, say you have 50 million illiterate second graders, that's, that's the amount of prison cells you need to start preparing for by the time they are... They're doing this across the whole country? Yes. Yes. Why? Well, probably well, this is not just Texas, this is actually... Just this is national. nationwide. I it was just Texas. This is nationwide. Wow. Uh, and it's, it's appalling. They would rather build pres prisons then spend, spend money on education, on education. Right. or doing something, mm -hmm. and it's politically un incorrect to, to, to do this. There's a lot of opposition to people saying, uh, you know, bilingual education didn't work. Uh, a lot of people say, well, my answer came here. And there. I had a guy come in my office fairly recently with the same situation. Well, I wish these darn Mexicans would just get off their butts and learn our language. They're here in this country, and I, and I was like... You really think that these people don't want to learn English? Right. You think yeah. that's the problem? Right, exactly. And the problem, and, and this is, I say this, I, I said this to some folks from the Barack Obama administration that came to UTB in, in the fall. The problem with that is a lot of people say that, and they may or may not be correct. The problem with it is that most of those folks immigrated from European societies, or had this big body of water between us and them. We don't have that as, as Latinos. We are not geographically isolated. We are simultaneously the newest and the oldest immigrants. Mm -hmm. So we don't lose our culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I bet you if you had someone from Russia, third generation, I bet you they retain very little of their language. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of their customs, maybe some of their food, but as far as language goes, they probably have pretty fully assimilated. Mm -hmm. I could guarantee. I could. I bet you that there's plenty of third generation Latinos that still retain much of their culture and most much of their language. Why? Because I have a border, mm -hmm. uh, a couple miles down the road here, mm -hmm. and a lot of people cross the border every day. So they keep the culture, they keep the language alive. Sure. Sure. Our situation is different, and mainstream America, for whatever reason, doesn't know it or doesn't accept it. Um, so they cannot judge us by their standards or what their history is. Exactly. It is different. Yes. yes. Um, and it's very politically incorrect to say that. There's a lot of hatred. There's a lot of uh, misunderstanding. Um, and a lot of stereotyping. About, you know, Mexicans and Latinos are just lazy. They just want to come here and take our, our, you know, our jobs and our, our welfare dollars. Mm -hmm. um, and to those folks, I say this. You can... Help us address this issue right now. Or you can accept the fact that these 2,000 children that are dropping out every day are going to make us a permanent welfare state. The state of Texas last year spent $90 billion in social welfare. And if we keep this up, we're adding to that number every day. Now, you can pay now a little bit and invest in these children so they be productive members of our society where well, they're paying into Social Security, paying into the tax base, to pay for roads, pay for police, pay for all the infrastructure that we have. Or you can turn a blind eye like you want to do and make them sink or swim. More than likely, they will sink. And you will be adding them to be exactly what you're afraid of, burden on the welfare system. I'm really... Uh fascinated uh, by the sort of the science behind the learning of children, in other words, how their brains actually work, what's effective. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that a lot of this has to do with what's actually effective in terms of stimulating the right uh, parts of their brains and, and actually having them retain and actually comprehend mm -hmm. uh, what's happening. There, there actually was a slide on the three-day training uh, that was very, very good. They, I think, if I remember correctly, it said, I remember 10% of what I hear. I remember 
uh, 90% of what I do. Mm. And with the model we have, the way, the way we're working it, is that they are doing. Yes. yes. Uh, whether you're a Spanish dominant or an English dominant, you're doing it regardless. So uh, our model, we're very, very proud of. And, and, and that, that's some of the stuff that I you know, entice people with, the ones that are afraid of it. Say, look, the possibility of this is too great to ignore. Yes. And, on my, and I walk over to my, to my office right now. I have on there uh, a typical graph of what happens to literacy from kindergarten to fifth grade and how they get behind every year and it snowballs. Mm -hmm. So we're, you know, like, there's no mystery to why you know, our kids are not passing these state exams. Mm -hmm. It's by design. Yeah, I wanted to ask you too um, how you envision the role of technology because I think we're dealing with a generation that is naturally, culturally, IT savvy, IT curious, IT capable. And I know you've just received a large shipment of laptops. And I'm also trying to connect that to Ash, um, doing it again, Brownsville's strategic plan, which is saying the job growth is going to happen in the IT sector, not in the lower income wage earner sector. Yes. And I'm looking at Brownsville and I'm saying, so who's going to get those jobs? Who's trained to take those IT jobs? Which means for me, they're going to be importing those IT specialists from outside and disenfranchising this community yet again. Mm -hmm. So is there a way that we can have these kids be the future workforce within, if they're indeed going to pursue IT, the IT sector in Brownsville, let's let these kids have those jobs. So what can we start doing now? That's why India had, had uh, enticed Bill Gates to go over there to invest a lot into, into their country. Why? because they put a big focus on math, science, and, and technology, and they're an English-speaking country. And the, the, the wages per hour is very, very low, very enticing for him. We have some of the same things here, except for math, science, and mm -hmm. technology. Mm -hmm. And we're in the continental United States. It's appalling. Yes. It is appalling. Some of the computers we even have in the school are Pentium 3s, mm -hmm. majority of them. We just got this shipment of stuff here, and we're glad to get it. These are, this is not a, a typical uh, tower or even a laptop. This is a new system called In Computing. Let me see if I can grab you something real quick. Here's a monitor. And instead of having a tower next to it, it has the CPU right here. This is the CPU. Uh, and, and it actually sends a signal to the bigger server which is part of the stuff that you see behind you there. So, for for example, licensing, one of the reasons why we haven't done anything is because software is very expensive, especially at Microsoft. Mm -hmm. So, with this system, it's called in-computing. See that right there? Mm -hmm. uh, we pay for one license as opposed to one per machine. And it goes for the server and sends it out to all the computers. Mm -hmm. so, so, you're, yeah, so, you're able to basically mirror... Yes. Yeah, yeah. so that's, that's the entire CPU. Mm -hmm. The only thing they're going to have after this is a keyboard and mouse. That's it. So it's lighter. Uh, it doesn't take much as much space or as much electricity. So, the only thing we're lacking now um, is software, educational software. We're going to have an office. And gonna... We're actually hoping that, that, that uh, after fifth grade here, that any of our kids could go and function in a Spanish-speaking country academically. Uh, we're we're actually hoping that we could we have video conferencing equipment that we could have the kids interact with the Spanish speaking country and be able to and and, and uh, as far as the state testing goes at the end of fifth grade uh, actually our goal is to have our third graders be able to take any of the state tests in Spanish or English no problem I can do it in Spanish I can do it in English mm -hmm. that's our goal.